Today I'd like to show you how I make my own stencils without a machine to make beautiful handmade wood signs. Here I have some MDF boards which were left over from another project along with some wooden batons. So these together with some handmade stencils I can make something beautiful for my home and I hope you will too, so come and see. I have a white paint which is a wood and metal undercoat and primer so I'm going to use this as my base coat on my MDF board. You could use chalk paint or any other kind of paint that you have that's suitable for wood. Any colour too and I'm just putting a little bit on and spreading it out nice and thinly so that I have a really thin coat of this on. You can see the brush marks and it was quite a dry brush as I brushed it all on. I've left that to dry which didn't take very long and I'm now going to add a little bit more texture and give it a bit of depth to try and give it a distressed painted wood look. I have a grey wood paint here but if you don't have any you could take some acrylic paint and add it into your white base paint. Just take a little tub and mix your colour. I have a piece of thick wallpaper here but some newspaper would do and we need to scrunch that up into a ball and we're going to use that in a moment. So take quite a dry brush of your grey paint and just loosely add some layers to it like this. We're just adding some strikes of paint all over and then we're taking our newspaper or uh, wallpaper and we're simply going to smudge this in. Don't worry, it does look a bit messy at the moment, but we're going to add a few more layers to it and keep going with this method until we get the desired effect for our distressed wood look. I'm using the paper to sort of scrub into the paint and then every now and again giving it a twist for where the knots in the wood would be. Once we've done with the grey, I go back in with just a little bit more white and repeat that process again. This way the layers and the textures keep building up. Just do what sort of feels right and scrubbing that in. We are going to be putting the stencil over the top of this so it doesn't have to be too detailed, doesn't have to be that contrasting. If you want to you could just paint it plain white, plain grey or whatever colour of your choice. I just like to add this in as a bit more detail for the wood sign. Once you're happy or you think you've done enough, you just sort of leave it as it is, let it dry fully and then you can come back and have a look at it again once you've let it dry. So I'm just going to just add a little bit more grey into the patches where I feel I didn't add any in the first place. Just about building up the layers and every time you do it, it will be completely different. So each piece is completely unique, which I absolutely love. So at this stage I'm leaving it to dry. I'm now going to take my wooden battens and I need to clean mine down as they're not brand new. So I'm just going to do that in some warm soapy water and then I am cutting them to size so that I can have a frame around our wooden sign. You can of course just use an ordinary saw for this. I have some wood stain that I'm going to stain these with. It's a brown one and I wanted it to be a bit darker so I've added a little bit of black acrylic paint into there and I'm simply going to take an old rag and I'm just going to brush this on and that way at the end we can throw away our, our rag and we don't have to wash it up. So this is a mixture of both the brown stain and the black acrylic paint. You could also leave them bare or you could add a clear sealant over the top. Just make sure you rub it on going with the grain of the wood. I've left those to dry and now I'm going back to our baseboard and I would just like to warm it up a bit because we did it white and grey. I'm just taking my sandpaper and I'm just taking off a little bit of the paint so that we see just little bits of that brown MDF wood below and it just gives it a little bit more character and it's going to look great at the end. I have some wood glue here. If you don't have any though you can use some PVA glue or white craft glue and you just want a really thin layer on the back of the batons and we're just going to place these all in place, line them up nice and neatly and to the edge, not forgetting the ends. Put all the frame down in place and leave it to dry with some heavy weights on so that it sticks nice for ready when we're going to nail it in a moment. I left this to dry just for an hour or so and now we can nail it in place. 
To make it nice and secure we can use our nails. You can use the hammer and nail or if you have a nail gun like this then that's nice and quick and easy. Nail it all around making sure that the batons don't come loose. All around the edge there making sure that we go through the batons and not through the centre of the wood. So that's all nailed. I just need to finish off any edges. I'll trim this little edge off and then I will stain all the way around to make sure it's all stained. And so now on to creating the templates for our font. Choose a word, I have coffee, and then go into any application on the computer. As a beginner it's easier to use a really bold font. I'm using the stencil font here. I know that my wooden frame is with on the inside it's three pieces of copy paper landscape next to each other. So I know that's the size I want to create. And as I have six letters here I can add two letters on each piece of copy paper. If you have a smaller sign then work out how many pieces of copy paper you need next to each other and print out the size of your word or design accordingly. Take the printed paper to your sign and make sure it fits before you get cutting. And then you can always make any adjustments you need to at this stage. You can cut your template out of card if that's what you have. A nice thick card would work. But I'm going to use these acetate sheets. These are actually ones recycled from the front of brochures so if you can't go out and buy something then maybe see what you have in your home that you could use and so it's just a really thin plastic that you can cut with a knife. So you can get a cutting board or a thick, really thick piece of cardboard and you want to tape down your template, the design we printed out on the computer and take the thin plastic and tape this down also. Take a sharp knife or a scalpel and we're going to cut out the inner sections of the template so that when we add the paint in we can just paint within those letters. Really take your time and follow all those lines as neatly and as accurately as you can. This is a really good way of creating a template so that we can create the same sign again and again if you want to. So that um, you don't have to go and trace the words on or use a Cricut or any of the other machines that you can use. And we're simply doing it by ourselves and creating really something wonderful. And just take your time there and really carefully take all those pieces out. I find it easier to move the board round as I go so that I'm cutting in the, more or less the same direction all the time just towards me there like that making sure you keep your hand well out of the way. I find it quite easy to cut the acetate but if you don't maybe try it on a thin card first a thin card stock and see how you get on with that. The acetate is great because it's more durable and so there we have it our oh, C to begin with and just carry on until you've got all your letters. What I did, I just did a C, an O, an F and an E and I'll use the F and the E twice. I really enjoy this part of the process and I hope you do too. Don't give up, keep trying if you're finding it a bit tricky and do just take your time and do a bit each day if you need to. I've cut all my four templates out now and I'm going back to my wood sign and I'm just basically marking the centre and then I'll mark the centre of my template also and then we can easily line that up. You can always draw a pencil line to give you a guide for the bottom of each letter. Make sure the letters will fit and then stick down with washi tape. I don't use it here but you can get a temporary bond adhesive spray that you can spray onto the back of the template to ensure none of the paint seeps through. For the lettering I'm using acrylic paints and I'm trying to create a similar colour to my border. Obviously do whatever colour text you like, you can match your home decor. I just find a nice contrasting colour to the background works really well. You can take a flat ended brush and use a stipple effect and dry brush it on. Or you can use, as I'm doing here, a small sponge. Just take small amounts at a time and we, you can test it out on a piece of paper and we're going to add this to the stencil. You really don't want too much paint on the sponge at a time so it doesn't seep through. 
If you are worried about this, as I say, you can use the non-permanent fixative. Can you notice my mistake? I'll show you that in a minute. Maybe you can point it out. I didn't notice it at the time. So carry on sponging and very gently filling in all the text. If you do make a mistake like I have here, you can just take some sandpaper and sand it away. Let it dry completely and that's the good thing about acrylics. They do dry really quickly and then take the tape off very gently and lift your templates and they're ready to use again for another project. Hopefully you've got quite nice neat lines and none of the paint seeped under too much. They're never going to be perfectly crisp lines unless you use the fixative but I really like the effect of these stencil templates. I missed that little section there off the F so I'm going to go in and add that on and then put two E's next to those and have you noticed my mistake yet? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I wasn't so aware of it at this point but when I put it up on the wall I sure noticed it. I'm really pleased with how it's going so far and I can't wait to put it up in my kitchen. Because we're going for that distressed sign feel, I like to take a little bit of really light sandpaper and just go very lightly over the letters, just so it matches in with the background there and distresses it a bit. If you did want to do two coats of acrylic paint and let it dry between layers to build up a darker layer, then obviously you can do that. And so there's my mistake, plain and clear, I put the C upside down. Good lesson there, always make sure you have your stencil the right way up before you add the paint. I did a quick fix with the C and then added a little bit more detail with the trace and paint method which I use on some of my other videos. You can add a top coat of varnish or lacquer over the top or some Mod Podge or just something to seal it and then you can pop it up on the wall with some string or a little bracket on the back and I think it looks really great. I'm really happy with it and I hope you will give it a go too. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.